what I have shaped into a kind of life. I had no model. Born in Babylon, both non-white and woman, what did I see to be except myself? I made it up here on this bridge between starshine and clay, my one hand holding tight my other hand. Come celebrate with me that every day something has tried to kill me and has failed. Um, this moved by Lucille Clifton's words of resilience, of celebration of life um, on this Juneteenth. I wanted to share uh, some reflections on, on tonight's Parsha. Um, we are the Shabbat reading Parashat Shlach, and uh, the Israelites are, are in the wilderness on the brink of, of getting into the promised land, and God tells Moshe, send some of them in to take a look at the land and see what is going on there. So 12 of them, 12 men go in, and 10 come back with uh, a report that it's terrifying in this new land, that um, the people there are giants, that they have no idea how they're going to survive what lies ahead. And two, Joshua and, and Caleb come back and say, no, no, it's okay, we can, we can do this, <laughs> don't worry. Ten of them say, when they're there, we felt like grasshoppers in our own eyes. And so we must have appeared to uh, the inhabitants of the land. And Joshua and Caleb say, no, no, it's okay. God, God is with us and we can, we can get there. We can do this. Um, and one of the things that struck me this week during the Parsha um, is that I think inside of, of each one of us, we have, you know, both of those voices going on, right? The voices of the, of the 10, of the Eda, and the voices of, of the two, um, the voices of worry about the real challenges that lie ahead and the risks um, entering into this unknown world and the, the heaviness of the work that we're called to do um, for our own liberation, for the liberation um, of others um, following their lead. And we have the voices of, of hope um, that see signs that there is goodness ahead and there is possibility um, in this new place that we're going to, that there's hope of life, of more life, um, that we can look to the liberation that has taken place in the past and, um, and find reason to believe that there will be freedom yet to come. So I was thinking about just holding both of these voices and um, the importance of, of listening, you know, when the various voices uh, come up um, and then at the end of the day, um, what it means to let the, the voice of hope uh, just a little bit louder um, to, to find the flickers of hope and, um, and cling, cling to those to inspire us uh, for all the work that, that lies ahead um, for liberation of, of all who are suffering. Um, so I wanted to share a story just thinking about the two, two voices and as we uh, celebrate Juneteenth and honor the, the narrative and the stories of black Americans um, also lifting up and honoring um, the stories that so often are, are silenced of um, indigenous people um, in this country. So I wanna share uh, a Cherokee legend that um, I found um, powerful and tied to, to this message from our Parsha. Um, so one evening, uh, a Cherokee elder told his grandson about a battle that goes on inside people. He said, my son, the battle is between two wolves inside us all. One is evil. It is anger, envy, jealousy, sorrow, regret, greed, arrogance, self-pity, guilt, resentment, inferiority, 
lies, false pride, superiority, and ego. The other is good. It is joy, peace, love, hope, serenity, humility, kindness, benevolence, empathy, generosity, truth, compassion, and faith. The grandson thought about it for a minute and then asked his grandfather, which wolf wins? The old Cherokee simply replied, the one you feed. Um, so inviting us to honor all of the, the voices that arise inside of us um, in this time of uncertainty and in our, our work for liberation and um, hoping the Shabbat will help us to, to feed the voices of hope, the voices of possibility, the voices of, of knowing that we are um, supported in our work for, for healing and for a better world. So we're going to um, turn in just a moment to Kaddish and wanted to honor um, voices on, on Juneteenth of Jews of Color um, in our community. The Jewish Multiracial Network uh, wrote a Kaddish for Black Lives, which they shared with the Jewish community and asked um, to be read on this Shabbat of Juneteenth. So I want to read this Kaddish for Black Lives um, and then we will... Uh, remember those um, in our lives and in our community um, whose yard sites we're observing and, and, and honor them. This is Kaddish for Black Lives. Creator of life, source of compassion, your breath remains the source of our spirit, even as too many of us cry out that we cannot breathe. Lovingly created in your image, the color of our bodies has imperiled our lives. Black lives are commodified yet devalued, imitated but feared, exhibited but not seen. Black lives have been pursued by hatred, abandoned by indifference and betrayed by complacency. Black lives have been lost to the violence of the vigilante, the cruelty of the marketplace and the silence of the comfortable. We understand that black lives are sacred, inherently valuable and irreplaceable we know that to oppress the body of the human is to break the heart of the divine. We yearn for the day when the bent will stand straight. We pray that the hearts of our country will soften to the pain endured for centuries. We will do the work to bind up the wounds, to heal the shattered hearts, to break the yoke of oppression. As the beauty of the heavens is revealed to us each day, May each day reveal to us the beauty of our common humanity. As the beauty of the heavens is revealed to us each day, may each day reveal to us the beauty of our common humanity. And together we say, Amen. Um.